Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last video, Decker had done some exploring for the lower Under Rail passages, the network of dark tunnels and hallways populated by vicious lurkers, a gang who is cannibalistic, filled with murderers, cutthroats, assassins, and other horrific lowlifes of the of the city. Or not the city, but uh, just Underrail in general, I suppose. We've explored a good amount of it, but there's still quite a bit left to explore down here. So, I'm thinking, originally we were going to go over to Foundry next, but I think we will continue to do a little bit of exploring for the passages first, before we go over to Foundry. Mostly because I don't want to talk to any NPCs. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to... Uh, actually, I'm going the wrong way if I want to do this. I should be going back to Core City. Oh, we've come so far now, Tim. Why not go to Foundry? Come on, we'll walk there. It won't take too long. Fine, alright, change of plans then. I originally wanted to just go and kill more lurkers down in those lower passages, but instead, we will go to Foundry and we'll talk to the good people of Foundry some. We'll get an opportunity to explore Foundry looking for oddy points in a few places, and we might be able to level... I, th I can think of where there's at least, I think, five experience points there. I think we're ten short. We're ten short. No, we probably won't get it from Foundry, our first visit. Well, well, let's see before we throw in the towel. Let's not be defeatist, Tim. No one, no one wants to hear you be defeatist. We can totally do this. If nothing else, we're also going to set ourselves up in preparation to be able to tackle Baylor in the future by getting the quest for him. We could actually take him out first. There's no reason why we need to get the quest from Foundry beforehand. But I generally like doing so. I like having a... What's what I'm looking for? Repertoire? Is that it? With the people of Foundry? Before I bring them Baylor's Eye. Alright. Let's... Do I want to eat some food? I guess we should eat some food. Let's have some Rathound Barbecue. We've got so much food. Always eat food in Underrail if you have some. The plus one stat or whatever as whatever other bonus it gives you is very, very nice. Can't think of why you wouldn't want it. Always do it. I'm babbling. Alright, let's head on into Foundry. I think this will be Decker's first time walking in here. like sandpaper. Foundry is well named because they do a lot of smelting here. They produce the metal that is used by the various different city-states here in Underrail. In the south, I suppose, at least, and probably ship a good amount of it up north as well. As such, this it's difficult to breathe the air here. Thankfully, we won't have any trouble being here for a little while. Hello, I'm new in this station. The air is so polluted here. Just a word of warning, the food here tastes awful. I can just taste foundry. I should probably leave this place. So many people die here all the time. Maybe that's why a lot of people here seem so hostile. Maybe. Maybe they wouldn't be hostile if you didn't carry around some flares and a mechanical repair kit in your pockets, though. Probably trust you more, you know, because you're not hiding as much stuff. One of the guards here has an electric eye. Pretty neat, if you ask me. I wish they'd let me take care of those mucky Rockies. I just rush in, all guns blazing. Let's search this, believe. Hard ass talking guy here. He's got 16 stitching coins, which are now in our pocket. The barkeeper pulls out a large cleaning mug and notices. And, wow. Upon noticing you approach, 
and puts it on the counter. A moment later, he moves his head aside and releases a few abrasive sounding coughs, taking an extra second or two to recover. Then, after wiping his eyes, he speaks to you with a voice equally pleasant as was his coughing. What do you have, pal? We got a couple of strong brews in here. Dark, light, rocky, and pansy. That one's for girly men and northerners. He laughs and coughs at the same time. What can you tell me about this place? Foundry's a mining station, and the largest exporter of raw ores and all that is metal. The pollution is a bit of an issue, as you can hear, but that's the price we agreed to pay for the riches as well as the safety the Foundry Guard has been ensuring us. He chuckles, coughing. Speaking of the foul air, even though I don't ever go near the mines, my coughing makes me sound like I've spent 50 years drilling with my mouth wide open. I'm looking for merchants. Can you point me to any stores? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, he points across from the bar. There's Brian's store there, and Bobby's up by the north wall. In between, you got Doc Stevenson and his wife Estelle if you need some medical aid. Now, Leonie, you went past her store to entrance, yeah? Yeah. Okay, to the west and the residential area, you got West's Electronics Store and Messer's Butchery. Who's in charge of this place? <laughs> that would be Marshall. <coughs> Marshall... Martin Marshall. Where can I find him? He points the Western Expert. A West Western Expert? The Western Exit. Go there. That's the residential area. And go all the way to the northwest corner. you also find Chief Banner there most of the time. He's the... The... Darn it. He sneezes. Wipes his nose with a handkerchief. Anyhow, he's the Chief of the Foundry Guard, pal. So if you need him, that's where you'll find him. What's the deal with the creatures from the mine? Ah, oh, well, you see... Recently, the Myers opened a passage into a new cavern. The cavern was full of strange creatures that had a shell made of pure hard rock. Yeah, that's what I was told. And they have these... He extends his arms above his, above and beyond his head and spreads his fingers. These huge metal spikes on their backs. Consequently, the mining operation was halted because the creatures were aggressive. Very aggressive. So the mine is closed for the time being. Some guardsmen were killed, even. And what's even worse, I was told a couple of those Rockies slipped in the residential area somehow. So a couple of folks have gone missing. He coughs. Are you any good rumors? Iron Heads engaged another Foundry Guard Patrol just east of here. They won't dare strike us here, Baron Heads. He laughs. Let me see what you got for sale. So he's buying four foodstuffs. We'll sell him the canned stew, the fish, and the mushrooms. Is there anything I'm interested in? I can always think of another eel sandwich. Ooh, mushroom salad. I'll grab one of those too. Hello. I'm also new to this station. The air is so polluted here. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you see the same thing, the same thing the girl says. And you. Keep your stuff. Foundry plans. Old, partially burned foundry plans. Unfortunately, you cannot make out the date they were drawn. And some 5 millimeter casings. All booze tastes like muck after coming back from the Dragon Drop. Pretty much everything tastes different around here. Food, water, medicine. That's a compliment to the absolutely exquisite meals you can get from the Dragon Drop. In case you've forgotten, that's the one... That's a bar that requires a jet ski to get to. And it's a, some sort of mobile drill, so it shifts position, I think, occasionally. Let's, I think Claude is, has the clean water here, and two stitching coins, which we'll take. Refreshing water, right here. Water, clean water here. The rest of it probably has oils and or impurities from the smelting process in it. Good god, what a nightmare. But they're trading, I guess, their health for safety. I suppose that it's worth it. A man wearing clean coveralls greets you with a large, and at first glance, honest smile. He's a large framed boulder of a man with big, strong hands sticking out of his sleeves. Yet his head seems rather tiny in comparison, reminding you of a custom-made replacement part that performs as it should, but looks somewhat off. 
he speaks to you without removing his smile. Well, hello, stranger. How's it going, huh? I know what you're thinking. Why did I come to this barren station? The air is hardly polluted, people are dirty, boring, and there's absolutely no fun to be had here. Don't break your pick, valued customer. There is more to foundry than what initially meets the eye. I... I feel it, oh, valued customer. I feel what you want to tell me so desperately. Don't say it. Shh. I know. You're searching for something special. For something that will make your day, your week, your life. You found it. I'm not joking. You know what it is, valued customer? Do you know what I have here? What I'm willing to offer to you for almost nothing. You're thinking of pulling your leg, aren't you? If so, then you're wrong. This is an offer you can't resist, and you know it. I have something you desire, and you know what it is, so tell me. Tell me. A railgun? Yes! Well, almost. Mechanical components! Excitement scars his face as he anticipates your reaction. I just knew it was going to be something stupid. I, Brian Honest, run the largest and only store in Foundry which specializes in mechanical components. You can find anything here, and I mean anything. Don't forget, they don't call me Honest for no reason, he laughs. Do you know anything about the creatures from the mine? Not much, just that after those things showed up and interrupted mining, so many people came to my store to purchase mechanical components of all kinds. And they felt golden. How is that all connected, you ask? They were suddenly exposed to something they hate. So they had to find comfort in something they love. And that was my store. Alright, let me see what you have in store. So... I think, yeah, you can get various weapon parts from him. Uh, pistol parts in particular. But he's not selling anything better than what we currently have. I'm not interested in purchasing anything he's selling. The only thing that might interest me is this extended magazine. But, no, uh, we'll be okay. I think you can get the occasional rapid reloader from him as well. So it's worth checking him out if you're crafting pistols. Oh, you check down here. Nothing in those barrels. I'm super paranoid about this and stuff now. I think, is it one? No, I think it's a different part that has the special audio item in it. Messer told me that Harthor had a burr vestation problem recently. Fuck. Yep, we took care of that, by the way. We made all the burrers, and we reopened their mine, actually. I think they're... Actually, no, I don't think they're in the mine. Maybe they are? I can't remember what they actually mined from that location. Nothing down here. Nothing searchable either. While well, we're right here, let's pay a visit to the good doctor, whose store I almost always forget. A young woman, unusually really for her age, nods at your approach. A kind stare and a light toothless smile, together with her somewhat weakly stance, as though a breeze is enough to knock her down, gives you an inverse impression that she is an old woman that looks younger, rather than the other way around. You know that it's wrong, though, and you instead shift your focus to her light, grainy voice, which you hear after some coughing. Hello, I'm Estelle Stevenson, Gabriel's wife and Foundry's only pharmacist. What can I do for you? Can you tell me anything about the mine creatures? Gabriel and I have seen a few of the wounds those creatures caused to a few miners unlucky enough to have been attacked by them, but lucky enough to make it back. One of them even spoke of a miner having his arm bitten clean off. Also, Bobby told me that some of the creatures have been seen in the residential area. I don't buy it. I'm sure the Foundry Guards keeping a watchful eye would never allow such a thing to happen. What can you tell me about Foundry itself? I'm guessing you already know about the mine and hard-working conditions. From a personal perspective, being a medical professional in here is... rather depressing. Death is not a stranger to Foundry, as people are mortally injured in the mine. In the metalworks... She shrugs. That's life here. My husband, the things he's had to deal with have been affecting him over the years, wearing him down slowly, so forgive him if he says something... You know. It happens sometimes. Still, I know one day things will get better. We just have to persevere. Let me see what you have for sale. So, she's buying three medicines. We'll get rid of all our small health hypos. And she sells, I think, jumping bean? Yep, jumping bean. And iron gut here. 
if you're interested, if you are doing any biology. But we are not, so that's not going to benefit us at all. I don't think we need anything else from her, so we'll just trade for some coins. You see a dull-faced man wearing a doctor's coat. Looking at it, you imagine it once used to be fresh and chalk white before age and constant use combined introduce unwashable impurities. It is if the coat reflects its owner, for he too invokes a clear image of someone who used to be young and full of spirit, but now has shriveled up as the hardships of life slowly win their personal war, one battle at a time. He looks at you with his tired, lifeless eyes and addresses you with a monotone voice. Hello. I'm Dr. Stevenson. How may I help you? Can you tell me anything about the mind creatures? The only thing that those things did was just increase the body count. People were dying already in Foundry, and in far greater numbers than is usually revealed. It's just that now even more lives are lost, and in a slightly different fashion. Getting pierced, clawed, torn to pieces, half-eaten, as opposed to getting crushed by mindfalls, incinerated, suffocated, and such. Some managed to survive a few of those things, and now have to live as cripples. That's all I know about the creatures. They kill. Can you tell me anything about Foundry? Do you really want to know what I think about Foundry? On second thought, maybe not. Good choice. Anything else? No, I don't need anything. Goodbye. I think like most doctors, he can heal you if you get damaged or wounded for a small fee. It's like a few things off of him. I guess we should search Estelle as well. Make sure the doctors aren't carrying anything with them on them that's bad. And they're not. What's in here? Anything in here? Nothing! <laughs> but a gate. That's interesting. I guess that's, that's an area for a future? Medical? bed or something? Alright, so let's keep exploring everything in this area at least. Let's search any of that. This place is so big! Hello, I'm new in this station. Ah, hello, another newcomer. There's lots of you around here. I'm new too. We should have, let's have something in common. Like the four stitching coins you have in your pocket. Hello, Mr. Gunner. Welcome to Foundry. Cause trouble and you'll find yourself between the hammer and the anvil. Coughs. Oh, I'm sure taking your seven stitching coins isn't considered to be any trouble. Lots of commoners just like, staring at steel beams. I guess there really isn't much to do around here. Doomsayer. All blasphemers shall be sucked into the darkest caverns and exhorbed, for they have denounced our one and only savior. All shall perish in a wave of mutated death. Repent now, or suffer for all eternity. I was about to say, I think this guy has a burger burger, and he does indeed, and a single stygian coin. Oh, we already did that, Tim. Crawlers! Up there, look! Points at the ceiling. Listen to me, my son. Ye be a sinner. Salvation lies in the church of Chort. Kind of certainly is interested in uh, announcing his religion to everybody. Holy crap, look at all the stuff this person has. Ten Southgate Station credits, a hacksaw, an omni tool, a patch kit, a brain, a human brain, some standard rounds, and a steel combat knife. Interesting. The short chubby fellow greets you with an ambulant smile and appears to be the owner of the store. However, it instantly becomes clear that he is also a proud owner of one more thing. A long, strong, and exceptionally well cared for beard. One he subconsciously strokes with great delight. Sadly, his voice is in the opposite condition. It has an unhealthy rasp to it. And as soon as it raises in pitch even slightly, it begins to break. Thin out into a weak, breathy voice. Which I'm not going to bother attempting. Good day, sir. My name is Bobby Bass, and I wholeheartedly welcome you to my reputable store. What do you sell here? Oh, this is Foundry's general store. It offers a wide variety of items. All kinds of tools of mining equipment, weapons, ammunition, armors, clothes. And I go on? All in all, feel free to take a look around, because I'm sure you're bound to find something to your liking. 
Of course, everything comes at an affordable price. <laughs> well, can you tell me about this place? Well, well, founders of mining community. Here we predominantly mine iron, but the mine is rich with metals like aluminum or titanium, among other things. Most of the population works in the mine, so you can... He coughs. <coughs> Guess people don't exactly come to Foundry <laughs> to search for an exciting and innovative work. He begins laughing, but is interrupted by coughing. If you're interested in becoming a miner, you might have to wait a bit. Some mean-looking creatures have showed up in the mine, and it's temporarily closed because of it. Yeah, what do you know about them? Not much. Just that they've killed some folks, and that mine is closed because of them. But I'm sure the Foundry Guard will deal with those mean creatures quite soon. They've got capable men and women working there, and if they can stop the Baron Heads <laughs> and others from harming us, they'll, have to, they'll be able to deal with a few pesky critters too, right? Who's that derailed man outside? I think he's on some drugs, to tell you the truth. There's something about him that makes me think so. And I've heard some core city folks talking about using some hardcore drugs there. He coughs. Maybe that's what he's been talking about, but I don't know for sure. He doesn't sound like he's from Core City. All in all, we just ignore him. He's a bit loud, but other than that, he causes no harm. Just ignore him and you're golden. Alright, man. See you around, Bobby. Actually, let me see your stuff first. So, he is always buying bullets, leather armors today, and some food stuff. Do I have any food I want to sell him? I don't think we need as much stuff bat. We won't need this either, and I don't think we're going to need all this canned meat. So, let's sell all that stuff to him. Is he selling any... Rapid Reloaders. He is not. And nothing else I'm interested in. A bunch of various types of cloth, which I'm not interested in either. And I guess we'll trade all our bullets. Or all the bullets I don't care about. Nice! 275 bucks for all of this. Thank you, sir. Without stealth, we can't search several of these places, by the way. Like, we won't be allowed in here. They think there might be an audio item in here, but it's no good. We're not going to be able to get any of, the, of those, not unless we want to fight all the foundry. There is, however, an arena now broadcasting schedule right here. Looks like that for one on the point of experience. Okay. Well, let's head up north first. Northwest is where the leader of Foundry is, and we might as well stop in and talk with him. But first, we'll visit all the Foundry workers and see what they're hiding in their pockets. Burger, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to hit A if it's like a single item, and believe I've got enough pickpocket to take it. Nothing on that guy. Oh my goodness, I opened up that. I'm so sorry. Thankfully, we didn't start f combat. And you have nothing on you. Right. So some items, some objects, you can interact with safely. And as long as you don't take what's in them, you'll be fine. Like a desk. Other items, however, or objects, sorry, you cannot do that with. Such as shelves. If you click on the shelf... Combat starts if it was at the shelf's. Uh, if the finger was red. I need some rest. I feel like I need to punch someone. It's very difficult to work in these conditions. Okay, it looks like they're making uh, metal bars here, uh, plates or something. This barrel, I think. No, it's this cart. The cart has, I think, a two point Adi item in it. Right? That's the... It's the fertility figurine, if I recall correctly. You don't find it hot in here? Oh, I absolutely do, but we're not going to be sticking around for too long. Just slow enough to steal your chariots. Nothing super suspicious. I haven't searched Foundry with all my other characters yet, so... Swinging that curse around, looking for secrets somewhere. This lazy foundry guard just staring out over this place with his ten million coins and his his three his gallon of gasoline. I 
I just need to hold on a little longer. Lunch break starts soon. Oh man, that sucks. I remember working at McDonald's when I was a lot younger, and man, time just wouldn't go by. It was only three hour shifts, and they felt like days for a single hour to go by. Everything in McDonald's is timed. Everything. So you always know when like another two minutes have elapsed. God. Oh, hey, a skeleton visor. It's a foundry worker's visor with a skull painted on it. Looks cool, but very impractical. Man. I've been kind of lucky, I guess. I really like the job that I've been working for the past 20 years. It's been great. I like the work I do. It's, re it's rewarding work as well. And I've been able to work whatever hours I want when I work it and wear what I want when working it as well. Like, it's a it's a programming job. I'm a computer programmer. And it's, it's wonderful. I'm very lucky to have a job which I really like doing. A metal figurine of a fat woman with no feet. How is this supposed to boost anyone's fertility is beyond you. It's a unique item. The only one of these exists right here, and it's worth two points of ID experience. Go us. I think there's one more Audi point we can get up here, so let's go and investigate that right now. I guess we are going to level in here. We could go into the mine for a little bit as well. Maybe we should get that done while I'm in the area. I don't think there's anything up here for us to interact with. Nope. Nothing in the barrel. You find the man working on a giant furnace, which is towering over the whole area. In fact, it seems like he is attempting to repair the furnace, and judging by his quiet swearing, he doesn't appear to have had any success so far. You see him use different tools, try out various parts, but no success. Suddenly, he stops working and tilts his head slightly to the side without actually turning around. A moment later, he picks up a large wrench and continues to repairs. That's when he speaks to you. Can I help you? What are you doing there? I think it's obvious what I'm doing. He puts down his tools and turns around, wiping the sweat off his forehead and transferring it to his already filthy coveralls. I'm Bernard. Do you need something specific, or are you just making small talk? Just small talk. Yeah, he rolls his eyes. Yeah, well, I suppose I could use a break. By the way, your name is... Decker. Ah. Go ahead. What you want to talk about? How's your repairs to the first coming along? You mean Gloria? My name is Gloria. Call your furnace Gloria. What's wrong with it? It's a beautiful name, I say. Gloria means glory, and this old girl and I have had our fair share of it. She served with me for many, many, many years. Ah, uh, now she's a cold, lifeless piece of junk. Ah, uh, Gloria, why couldn't I have died before yes, so you didn't have to suffer like this? Why can't you fix it? It's a weird electrical problem. I think I know exactly what causes it, but whatever I do somehow seems wrong. What's worse, that bastard up there said she's old, draws too much power from the system, and it's just not useful anymore because we've got better ones now. I'm talking about you, Marshal, you bloody... He raises a clenched fist in the air. When Gloria broke down, our beloved mayor personally instructed everyone not to bother repairing her. He turns toward Large Furnace. I'm not breaking my pick. I'll find some way to fix you. I will. Can you tell me anything about the mine creatures? I heard some scary stories about them things, you know. After the mine was closed, some folks started going missing. The mine entrances are guarded well, yet the creatures somehow still managed to slip past them. Some say it's got nothing to do with the creatures, but with the recent increase in crime rate instead. I mean, the prison's getting fuller and fuller, but who knows? You take care in any case. Alright, Mayor Bernard, talk to you later. So he's part of a quest that we will be doing later, the Beast Quest. I think there's another point of body experience that's in our foundry plants right here. Yep. Three more Audi points left. Okay, let's go into the mine. Let's do this. Did I bring enough bullets for this? I didn't. But we should be okay anyway. 
We're not going to be fighting blade links. My, I plan just to explore a little bit. Of, actually, maybe... We, yeah, we'll explore just a little bit. I didn't bring actually any... Uh, I didn't bring a... Well, actually, Tim, you can find one here. Somewhere in here, there's going to be... A, yep, there's one right here, actually. A jackhammer. Hmm. Maybe we should do this now? You know what? We should do this now. Let's carry capacity. Okay, fine. Let's do, let's do this now. So, we'll take the jackhammer. We're going to go ahead, everyone, and do some metagaming here. We're, we need some parts of the creatures that are in here if you want to solve the problems that Foundry has in a very nice way. To do that, quickly, we will need a jackhammer to assist us. I don't know if I've got the... Well, you don't have the bullets for it, but we should do this anyway. Hey! Another obsidian shard. Shard of volcanic glass. Blailings are one of the creatures that, for me, don't like to relinquish their oddity items very often. Hello, there's little borers down here. Let's, uh, let's just do this right now. All right, there we go. We're gonna need a, bur a borer, so we may as well grab that one. An old looking lamp. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be functioning. Rubbing it isn't helping either. And that levels us, holy crap. All right, let me see. I'll be right back everyone, I need to pull up my build. And I'm not recording. Decker's gonna get my pointing guns at melee. Thank you, not a whole, much ha not a whole lot happened before I noticed that. Great, so level 17. Once again, five points in guns and melee, five points into dodge and evasion. We're gonna put five points in pickpocketing. The cax is being leveled up. And these last 10 points, let's improve our. Hmm. Lock picking one point, since any other points you put into it doesn't seem to affect it very much. There's a level, there's a cap associated with your skills that gets, I believe, a little limited on you until you begin dumping a lot more points into it. So we're not putting all the points I want into lockpicking quite yet. We'll put a few more into the next level. Five points left. I think these are going to go into tailoring. Or four points left. We don't get a feat. We do get a specialization point. Oh, do you want escape artist or expertise, Tim, here? I think we should take escape artist. Let's take escape artist. So, the reason for that is because when we do the DLC, we're gonna get rooted a lot. There's several enemies that can do that to you, from nets to other such effects, and being able to get out of it and have increased movement will come in really handy for Decker. Now, we're gonna murder these creatures because they drop horror jaws. The inner jaw of a borer, it's lined with sharp, stony teeth. One audio experience point, you can study it four times. Wasting all my criticals at the moment. The jackhammer. By the way, everything in here becomes untakeable. Oh, not everything, I'm sorry. A great many things in here become unsearchable or untakeable when you complete the beast quest. So if you're gonna go ahead and search this stuff, make sure that you do it, or you like you want a jackhammer from here, do it before you kill the beast. Another odd experience point. 
I think, by the way, if you drop the jackhammer, any of the jackhammers that you pick up from here on the ground, I believe you can't pick it up again it, if someone notices you without everyone going hostile. At least that had been the case earlier. Nice. One more jaw. We're done with the Adi point items. All right. That was fast. Four more points of Adi experience as well. We don't need to kill any uh, any more of them, so we can just let them stay here. We'll grab the free TNT from that spot. Continue looking for these creatures we've been told about. Okay, so first, I like killing... Period. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I like killing. But I like killing all the borrowers in here to make sure they don't get in the way when I do quite a bit of running around, which is, which is what we're about to do. All right. I think we need 30 bladeling shards to complete this quest. And you get, I believe, anywhere from one to four of them when you use a jackhammer onto this chromium rock. All right, our first bladeling, everyone. Let's back up a little bit. Bladelings are very slow, but they're heavily armored as well. Thankfully, we have exposed weakness on our power fist to help us fight them. I almost forgot. Blailings are also immune to critical hits. Uh, aim shot will not critically hit them at all. Apply and three blades. The blades weigh quite a bit, so we're gonna want to make sure we don't get overburdened. And actually, as long as I'm checking, I also don't need any of this garbage. All right, let's keep keep at it. We we are also looking to get we're looking to get four blatantly out of the items from them. Out of the way, little creatures. Words. I have killed every playling in this mine twice and not gotten the items, the oddly experience points I needed. So this can take quite a bit of time. And when I complain about oddly mode, it's this area in particular that I complain about. That is the focus of most of my negativity regarding the game. So actually, we should move up, and we should do this thing. And by negativity about the game, I meant just Adi mode. This has always been diff has been time-consuming to do and a bit grindy. Yeah, I should have taken lightning punches. Still kill it. All right, we just leave the shards in the carts, and once we've got, I think, 30 of them, we'll get 40 just to be safe. Once we have that many, we should be done. We should have enough to complete the quest. We'll want to make sure that we have one with us as well, because we need to bring one with us to Southgate Station.
Holy burrowers. There's a ton of them in here. Okay. Let's leave these behind. Our food ran out. We should totally eat something. Let's have another Rat Hound barbecue. Since we're punching these things a lot, we're going to want that increased strength. Let's get the cart here. Alright. And let's kill an active Bladeling. We shouldn't let ourselves get hit if we can avoid it. They cause bleeding wounds. They do decent damage. But it won't be anything we can't handle. Our The fact that we're wearing riot armor will help reduce the damage we take from these creatures as well. Sure. Very rarely, you're able to hold on to all of your action points. The game, you might have noticed, docks some from me when the combat starts. This is because combat is starting after... Uh, uh, how's this? I can't, why can't I phrase it? Combat, uh, the creature's starting combat, and it's happening within the time frame that I have used the jackhammer at. And so it's Docking me using the jock the jackhammer from the action points I am able to use that round. Our first out of the item from them, Serian Bladeling Blade. See if we can read about that. A sharp, serrated, knife-like spine taken from the Bladeling's rock shell. Worth two points of experience, and we can study it four times. It's super important for Decker to get these, because without stealth, we're not going to be able to get uh, the items from all the other locations we would otherwise be able to get them from. done with under rail. We'll check the... Uh, hold on one second. Let's see. Sure. We'll check our list of oddity items. We'll see exactly how much of them we did not find. I Oh, nice. Another one. Wow, that that's super lucky to find a, another one so soon. I'm, I'm hoping that the game... Because it, it knows, obviously, that I'm recording it. I'm, I hope, I'm hoping that the game is very kind to us, and it will just give me these, these oddity items, so I don't have to sit here and kill them over and over and over again. I actually just rumble here with another obsidian shard. Very nice. Another point of body experience. Wow, we've almost gained another half level. And we will if we get all the other oddity 
items we need from the bladelings. I guess we can leave some of the garbage in the rubble. I don't need that stuff. How is my equipment holding up? Power fist could use a repair. Pistol's fine. Okay. And we could also use a recharge on the power fist. It's completely drained. Same thing for the jackhammer. So, we're only going to use a jackhammer on a few more of these, because I think there's a few other walking around bladelings in the other areas. And in fact, I think we won't need the jackhammer again after this one. Yep, 41. Perfect. So we can take one shard with us. And we'll just leave the, the jackhammer back here. Do you explore the rest of the mine? There are some other oddity items in here. I think the other foundry helmet is located in not this area, but the area is just to the south. We don't have to bring the cart with us. I am just in case I do decide to loot more of those uh, blades. But I think at 40, we absolutely have what is, what's required. A single lock pick. That bladeling has seen us. Let's say. Uh, let it get closer. Another lantern. We don't need that one, though. There's no odd experience points to be gained from it. But we might as well start to take that from the body. Oh, alright. Just one more live blade link here. Now, we could... Take that jackhammer and wake up all these bladelings, or hope they're bladelings, and kill them for the for the odd uh, the item. But I'm not going to do that at this moment. I'm going to hope that the roughly six or seven more bladelings that are walking around will have the two odd uh, items that I want. Uh, uh, rather, I'm sorry. Drop. Uh, be kind enough to drop the blitzerian bladeling blade from its loot table for us. This guy, I think, has the other helmet. Bladelings are so slow. We just need one more. Come on, game. You can do it for me. That'd be so wonderful if you give me all the oddity, uh, the bladeling blades. We get another skeleton visor off this guy, an advanced hell typo. I think there's three more active bladelings in this area. Three, two or three of them. Carpus is charged. Oh, hello. What are you doing over here? I thought we cleared all the blade leaves from this area. Oh! I suppose we just still on cooldown for one more turn. Let's let it get closer to us, then. We're just we're just too efficient. 
just too efficient. That's all the ones in this area. All right, the next area actually has the beast in it. It is a much larger version of the bladelings we've been fighting so far. It is also, to my knowledge, impervious to all weapons. We will not be able to harm it in any way. There's also several other bladelings in the area as well. I, there's also faceless bodies here. It's safer for us to come over here later, but I'm interested in searching these now. There's the beast. There's the beast. I thought there were other live ones around, but I guess I am incorrect. This dead guy has an 8.6 millimeter Hazard bipod in decent shape. That's worth taking. Dead guys, that one has nothing on him. And we can see the dead faceless here as well. We're definitely going to want to search them. AFW, a quaint old world bolt, bolt action sniper rifle, worth quite a, a good amount of money. A brewer job will take that. Okay, it's seen us. A plasma pistol, that's worth taking, and tons of batteries to go with it. It's a little faster, I think, than the normal ones are. But uh, we're still going to risk this. This is what this is what I want. Faceless mask fragment. This is a fragment of a faceless mask. The inner workings of the mask have been destroyed or removed, so it's impossible to tell if there's some non-obvious purpose the mask serves. You can study these six times, actually, and they're worth one odd experience point each. But you'll have the only problem with the faceless masks is that you have to kill Faceless to get them. And a sniper rifle. I guess we're taking that too. Right, goodbye, Beast. This is the only time I will actually leave an uh, uh, area in combat. Because I kind of have to. Alright, so there's one more bladeling that we have to kill to get its bits from. We can come back for it later. Oh, actually, Tim, you're right here. You, you might as well do it now. At least kill other faceless in this room. Faceless. Uh, bladelings. You've got five more. Come on, get, get it done. At the rate in which you're finding them, they one of these should have that last blailing, blailing item. Ooh, maybe you'll have it. Expose the weaknesses. Not on that one. Try another. Have some power. This will be good. We have plenty of power. Come on, Chromium Rock. Be a blade link for us. Yes. On cooldown? That's still on cooldown! Oh, uh, we just move away then. 
Thanks. All right, here we go. Yes! Hey! We got all of them! That's wonderful! Wow! I cannot believe how lucky that, that was. Not only we got all of them, all four. I didn't have to come back here to get more of them. Maybe they increased the drop rate. I suspect, though, what's actually happening is I'm just getting super lucky. Okay, let's put in even more of these ladling blades. Nice! I can't believe it! That's taking me hours to do before. Uh, I guess I I guess I can't really complain about it. Uh, on screen, I have shown that we didn't even have to kill all the other bladelings up in the northern area. Yeah, maybe Stitch and Software has increased the drop rate of the bladeling blades. All right, so let's worm our way back to how we entered the mine system so we don't arouse any suspicion. And then, I th actually, I think we should stop here. We're playing for just about an hour. And we gained, wow, we gained 26 oddity experience points in this episode. Amazing. We'll probably level again in the next episode. I think... Well, maybe not. I'm going to probably be cleaning out more of the Underworld Passages, exploring the last bits of Foundry, but we won't be fighting Baylor in the next one. That will be, I think, an episode after that. Alright, so then I'm not going to make you guys watch me walk back. So thank you guys for watching. This was fun. We got a whole, almost a full 30 points of experience point, uh, audio experience in this, in this episode. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.